Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Hussainova and I'm going to present today COVID-19 and the eye presentation. Introduction The COVID-19 pandemic affected the healthcare system since its first case in December 2019 and altered the clinical approach to patient examination and management in the whole world. The pathogen in this novel coronavirus disease 2019 is SARS-CoV-2, an enveloped positive strain RNA virus belonging to the genus beta coronavirus of the family Coronaviridae. Ocular symptoms have been reported in one third of COVID-19 positive patients with some variable symptoms in published studies. Most of patients showed ocular signs between 7 to 14 days from the onset of systemic COVID-19 symptoms. It's important for ophthalmologists to have knowledge about the ophthalmic manifestations of the novel viral infection in order to suspect, diagnose, refer, and treat the conditions with skills. Articles in the English language published between January 1, 2020 to February 2021 were included to formulate the description of the current understanding of the ophthalmic manifestations of COVID-2 virus. All the cases were diagnosed as COVID-19 based on nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal swabs or antibody titers. Why the eye? Let's continue with general explanation about that. Angiotensin converting enzyme 2 serves as the receptor for the virus and is found in the eye suggesting that the virus may, may be transmittable via tears. SARS-CoV-2 is capable of binding and using uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 as a cell entry receptor to epithelial cells via this spike protein. The viral RNA may be detected in conjunctival swabs even in patients without ocular manifestations. And ocular surface manifestations of COVID-19 can be acute within a week or delayed after a week of COVID-19 infection. Ocular surface and eyelid manifestation of COVID-19. Let's begin with follicular conjunctivitis from the publication of Sindue et al. In a large series of cases with mild COVID-19 infection, it was reported that 11 patients from 127 had conjunctivitis. All symptomatic patients gave a history of redness of one or both eyes. Presence of respiratory tract symptoms were associated with conjunctival congestion, and a positive history of hand-eye contact had four patients. However, this did not attain clinical significance as a risk factor. The publication of Chen et al. showed the study uh, based on 535 cases um, had eye, hand eye contact and independently correlated to the presence of conjunctival congestion amongst patients. It was also suggested that ocular manifestations are more common in the middle phase of the COVID 19 infection and the conjunctival swab remained positive for five days. Here is the picture of a patient from Chen et al. A 30-year-old man developed bilateral follicular conjunctivitis 13 days after mild COVID-19 infection. And here we can see on the day 13, here we can see an infection and injection of conjunctiva. And on the day 17 and 19, there is an um, improvement of patients' symptoms after started the therapy with ribavirin eye drops. Here is another case of follicular conjunctivitis from Nayak et al., a case of delayed onset of follicular conjunctivitis four weeks after severe COVID-19 infection in a 65-year-old male with diabetes, hypertension, and asthma. The conjunctival swab did not reveal any bacterial or fungal infection. The conjunctivitis resolved in two weeks with lubricants and preservative-free moxifloxacin eye drops. The virus shedding in the conjunctiva may persist even after the nasopharyngeal swab becomes negative for SARS-CoV-2 virus. And here's the timeline of events. So here we can see that the patient started uh, his disease with the symptoms of fever on the day zero. On the day 25, there was a respiratory distress and the patient was hospitalized. On day 26, the COVID-19 was diagnosed in that patient. On the day 32, 32 PCR test was negative and the conjunctival injection 
and congestion on the right eye started. On day 34, PCR test was still negative. On day 37, there was a uh, started resolution of conjunctival, conjunctival inje injection as well as congestion and lead edema. On day 38, the third uh, PCR test was negative for COVID-19 and the patient was extirpated. On the day 46, there was a total resolution of follicular changes of the right eye. A case of virus, a viral conjunctivitis was presented from Chema et al. Keratoconjunctivitis was observed in a patient with mild respiratory symptoms. The patient presented with redness, discharge and photophobia and was treated as herpetic keratoconjunctivitis and later as epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. Accordingly, uh, since the patient has a travel history in Canada, the COVID-19 testing was uh, performed and the nasopharyngeal and conjunctival swabs both turned out to be positive. Here is this uh, schematic representation of the slit lamp examination findings of a progressive clinic visits and here you can see the increase in the corneal lesions over time uh, in the first visit, second and the third visits. Another case of viral keratoconjunctivitis was presented from Hua et al. A patient with moderate severe COVID-19 infection developed conjunctivitis 10 days after COVID-19 symptoms and in the first episode the cornea was clear and patient had a viscose discharge. The testing was performed that the patient was positive. On the second day after starting the local therapy accordingly, patient recovered well within a week but presented with a relapse and peripheral corneal staining in both eyes after five days of treatment. Hemorrhagic and pseudomembranous conjunctivitis was presented from Navid et al. The author reported a case of 63-year-old male patient with severe COVID-19 infection, hemorrhagic and pseudomembranous conjunctivitis 19 days after the onset of systemic symptoms was developed and treatment was with antibiotics and dexamethasone drops and daily the treatment of pseudomembrane was also performed and here you can see a photo of the right and the left eye. Conjunctivitis in children was published from Dantoluri et al. The acute febrile multisystem vasculitis known as Kawasaki disease, which presents in young children, can present similarly when affected by COVID-19. Just like in Kawasaki disease, COVID-19 can cause excessive inflammation and cytokine storm during the active phase of the infection. This disease is commonly being noted to have serological positivity for SARS-CoV-2 than on nasopharyngeal swab indicating it to be a manifestation of delayed immunological response to this infection. It remains unclear if the presence of conjunctivitis is attributed to the coronavirus itself or if it's a manifestation of vasculitis. Treatment is directed towards suppressing the systemic inflammation, corticosteroids, intravenous immunoglobulin, and aspirin have been used in the case reported and just a general information about Kawasaki disease it's a form of self-limiting vasculitis which is associ associated with iridocyclitis, punctate keratitis, vitreous oppositis, papillae edema and uh, subconjunctival hemorrhage and conjunctival injection. A case of ep uh, episcleritis was published from Otaif et al. As we know, episcleritis is a self-limiting inflammatory condition of the episclera and uh, the patient was a 29-year-old male with a history of foreign body sensation in the left eye and during the examination it was revealed that the patient has nasal conjunctival and episcleral congestion with blanching with phenylephrine and he developed a mild viral infection with symptoms appearing three days after the ocular signs and later was diagnosed for COVID-19 infection. And here we can see a nasal local hemorrhage of that patient's eye. As for the eyelid, Meduri et al. Uh, reported 11 patients uh, with the eyelid manifestation in the form of meibomian abnormalities as well as lead margin hyperemia and teleangiectasia. Uh, ectasia and blepharitis, blepharitis was also positively correlated with COVID-19 and here in this table we can see an eyelid and ocular surface manifestation of COVID-19 patients with symptoms, signs and 
incidence. As a summary of ocular surface and eyelid manifestation of COVID-19, we can conclude that conjunctival congestion may be an early sign of COVID-19 infection even before the development of systemic symptoms in 2.26% of patients. Patients with conjunctivitis should be specifically asked about COVID-19 related symptoms and advised to get tested if present. The ophthalmologist in the cured state should have a high index of suspicion for COVID-19 in patients presenting with conjunctivitis. Posterior segment manifestations of COVID-19. Retinum vascular occlusions. So let's start with uh, uh, central retinal vein occlusion, CRVO. CRVO is one of the many vascular manifestations of COVID-19 and the clinical difference of CRVO was not different from CRVO of non-COVID-19 patients. High dose steroids may help to normalize the inflammatory markers and coagulation indices. Um, cystoid macular edema was treated with anti-VGF therapy and in patients with systemic symptoms of COVID-19 infection, early anticoagulant prophylaxis should be considered. And here is the retinal image of a 52-year-old patient presented with the decreased visual acuity in the left eye 10 days after he tested positive for COVID-19 disease. A case of central, retin uh, uh, central retinal artery occlusion was published with Dumitrascu et al., a 48-year-old man with obesity was hospitalized with a severe form of COVID-19 infection and this was also, this, the condition was also complicated with acute respiratory failure, septic shock, dilated cardiomyopathy and fungemia. Three weeks later, uh, the anticoagulation therapy was switched to oral apixaban 10 mg twice daily and patient developed later acute severe right eye visual loss of no light perception and was diagnosed with incomplete ophthalmic artery occlusion. Incomplete ophthalmic artery occlusion developed despite the patient being on enoxaparin for deep vein thrombosis. Acaria et al published a case of 60-year-old Hispanic male with past medical history of hypertension, dyslipidemia, stable coronary artery disease, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Um, in the emergency department, the patient was presented with persistent fever, cough, and worsening uh, shortness of breath. On 12th hospital day, he complained of sudden onset of painless loss of vision in the right eye. What we have to note here that most patients experience a non-arteritic CRAO and in non-arteritic CRAO, the retinal artery is occluded from a platelet fibrin thrombus or embolism from an atherosclerotic lesion on hypercoagulable states such as uh, with COVID-19. Uvia. Povidense et al. Uh, show the reactivation of serpiginous choroiditis following following COVID-19 infection. This patient had older pictures of prior retinal examination which showed evidence of atrophic lesions on fluorescein and geography, indicative of previous episode of choroiditis. Autoimmunity activated by SARS-CoV-2 is believed to play a role in this. Casagrande et al. showed that SARS-CoV-2 RNA uh, was detected in the retina of patients diagnosed with COVID-19. What should be noted, in the absence of comorbidities and in young adults, vasculitis can produce retinal vascular occlusion. The delayed onset can be explained by the immune complex deposition as a part of type 3 hypersensitivity reaction producing a pro-inflammatory state with a cytokine storm. Summary of posterior segment manifestation of COVID-19. The literature review showed that the mean age of the patient was 47 years old plus minus 14 years. The mean duration between appearance of ophthalmic, uh, ophthalmic symptoms and the COVID-19 symptoms or diagnosis was 12 days. Venous thromboembolism is seen in as many as 19-25% uh, of the COVID-19 patients in ICU and on anticoagulants. Retinal findings on OCT COVID-19 showed hyperreflective lesion at ganglial cell layers and inner plexiform layer prominently at the papillomacular bundle. 
The affinity for ganglion cells and plexiform layer may explain the associated central nervous system manifestation as well. And here we continue with neuroophthalmic manifestations of COVID-19. Papillophlebitis. Papillophlebitis is an uncommon condition which can affect young adults and one such case has been reported in a COVID-19 patient. There is a painless unilateral sight diminution of vision. Visual field shows an enlarged blind spot. Ophthalmic findings include dilated, tortuous retinal vessels, disc edema, superficial retinal hemorrhages, cotton wool spot with or without macular edema. Fluorescein angiography presents discrete venous staining and leakage late staining of optic disc but no evidence of ischemia or peripheral, uh, peripheral vasculitis. About 30% of the cases develop vision threatening ischemic venous occlusion followed with a neovascular glaucoma and macular edema. What is important to know that in young adults vasculitis can produce retinal vascular occlusion as well. Here is the case of a 40-year-old patient de who developed a decreased visual acuity in the left eye six weeks after a mild COVID-19 infection. Here we can see in the photos A and B, fundus photograph, which shows inflammation of the optic disc as well as retinal venous vasodilation. And red-free retinography shows tortuosity and superficial hemorrhages. In the photos C and D, we can see an early and late arteriovenous phase of a fluorescein angiography examination and it shows the discrete venous staining with leakage and late, late staining from the optic disc. In the images of E and F, uh, the OCT showing optic disc edema without macular edema and the visual field uh, with a slight central scotoma and a slight to moderate increase in the blind spot. Optic neuritis was published from Savala et al. and uh, Joe et al. Um, the case report, the, uh, those authors reported patients who, who presented the following symptoms as painful vision loss, a relative, relative afferent a popular defect, RAPD, visual field defects and optic nerve enhancement or magnetic resonance imaging. Both cases had antimyelin oligodendrocyte, glycoprotein antibodies, cerebrospinal fluid, CSF examination, immunological profile and viral panel and MRI brain did not reveal any other underlying etiology. And treatment was uh, on the same lines as a typical case of optic neuritis with intravenous uh, methylprednisolone, oral prednisolone, and a visual recovery and uh, resolution of disc edema was also observed. What should be noted, the virus has not been isolated from the CSF of the patients, indicating that the virus may not be directly involved in the cerebral, cerebrospinal fluid, rather it may be in an immune mediated insult and it's possible that in future a spike in the myelinating neurological conditions may be seen triggered by the viral infection. Here is the fundus images of 26 year old Hispanic man presented for evaluation of bilateral subacute sequential vision loss first affecting the left eye then the right eye three days later after diagnosed COVID-19 infection and color fundus photographs reveal bilateral disc edema and venous congestion with retinal perivenous hemorrhages of the right eye indicating severe axoplasmic and venous stasis at the level of the congested right optic nerve head. A dystonic pupil was also diagnosed in a patient after COVID-19 um, onset. The patient was a healthcare worker who gave a history of retroocular pain and reading difficulty two days after the systemic COVID-19 symptoms. Pupillary hypersensitivity to 0.1% pilocarpine confirmed the diagnosis of Edis uh, tonic pupil. The functional receptor for the virus, ACE2 receptor, has been identified in both brain and the ba uh, basal layer of 
nasal epithelium. It has been suggested that the virus can enter the brain from the nasal epithelium via the olfactory bulb. Systemic oral steroids led to full anatomical and functional recovery, further favoring the role of autoimmune factors mediated by COVID-19 in the development of Addis tonic pupil. Miller Fisher syndrome and cranial nerve palsy uh, was also published uh, in patients of the COVID-19 infection, as well as a case of right-sided facial nerve palsy was also reported in a child with agammaglobulinemia and hyper IgM syndrome, asthma and obstructive sleep apnea in the USA. Cases of Miller Fisher syndrome responded well to uh, IVG therapy, intravenous immunoglobulin while cranial nerve pulses resolved spontaneously in most cases in two till six weeks. And in this case, uh, cases, again, a misdirected immune system triggered by the viral infection is believed to be at fault. Here we can see MRI images of a 32-year-old man with acute onset left abducens nerve palsy five weeks after COVID-19 infection. A image shows a T1 coronal image demonstrating volume loss of the left lateral rectus muscle and in the image B, T2 uh, actual uh, axial, uh, axial image showing an atrophic and hyperintense left lateral rectus muscle. Here we can see on the left restricted up gaze uh, in abduction and down gaze of the left eye in ocular motility examination where in the image on the right we can see a complete recovery of the ocular motility examination obtained by the sixth day. Neurogenic ptosis was also published from Assini et al. and Huber et al. Asini uh, et al. published a case with an acute onset of bilateral ptosis with other neurological signs of Guillain-Barré syndrome. Symptoms developed almost 20 days after severe COVID-19 infection and GBS with cranial nerve involvement can uh, those be a late manifestation of severe COVID-19 infection and good response to immunoglobulin supports the immune-mediated pathogenesis. Hubei et al. published delayed onset of ocular myasthenia gravis in a 21-year-old healthy woman. She gave history of mild flu-like symptoms a month ago and her antibody titers were suggestive of past infection with uh, SARS-CoV-2. In view of rapid worsening of symptoms, she was treated with um, IVIG was gradually increasing dose of pyridostigmine and it's likely that COVID-19 infection can also potentially trigger or exacerbate autoimmune disease which is also proved um, with many other manifestations previously. Cerebrovascular accident with vision loss. Giretal, uh, reported that acute onset of bilateral painless vision loss should prompt the treating physicians to advise an urgent imaging of the brain with angiography. Young et al. described the development of bilateral supranuclear gaze palsy with right branch retinal artery occlusion in a 60-year-old patient with a history of atrial fibrillation, COPD, bladder carcinoma on chemotherapy, and bacterial endocarditis. Diffusion weighted uh, MRI revealed an infarct in left pyramidium, pyramidium midbrain. In this case as well, COVID-19 possibly aggravated the procoagulant state of the patient. Summary of neuroophthalmic manifestation of COVID-19. The mean age of the patients with neuroophthalmic manifestation was uh, 42 plus minus 16 years. Uh, of the 19 cases reported, 13 were males, while only 7 had systemic comorbidity in the form of hypertension and diabetes. The median gap from COVID-19 to development of ophthalmic symptoms was 5 days. Approximately, neurotrophism of the virus has been proposed as one of the mechanisms for the neurological and neuroophthalmic manifestations. It's important that physicians uh, ask leading questions about double vision, decreased vision, pain with eye movements, gait abnormalities or other neurological conditions while screening patients with COVID-19 symptoms. Neuroimaging with angiography with attention to cranial nerves for any abnormal enhancement or cerebral infarcts can be advised based on the assessment. 
orbital manifestations of COVID-19. Dacryo at the 90s is the most common cause of a painful lacrimal gland mass and the most common cause of dacryoadenitis is viral infection. The patient had a four-day history of eyelid swelling and pain. The patient's antibody tests for IgM and IgG were positive. Other tests for autoimmune conditions were all negative. A diagnosis of acute dacryoadenitis as a late complication of SARS-CoV-2 virus was made. In the early stages of the disease, the virus can travel to the lacrimal gland via the lacrimal ductulus or by direct hematogenous spread, and later immunological response incited by the virus may affect the lacrimal gland producing inflammation and acute dacryoadenitis responds well to systemic steroids. And here on the right you can see a 10 year old girl developed painful progressive left eyelid swelling and lacrim lacrimal gland mass uh, with a mild COVID-19 uh, infection. Orbital cellulitis and sinusitis was published from Turbin et al. Two adolescent boys developed acute onset unilateral progressive painful orbital swelling. There were no symptoms of chronic sinus disease. Suggested mechanism is that COVID-19 induced upper respiratory congestion uh, can compromise secondary sinus obstruction and bacterial infection. Shiris et al. published a case of 76-year-old man, diabetic, hypertensive with testicular cancer and COVID-19, developed a spontaneously draining orbital abscess and globe perforation necessitating inucleation with sinus debridement. Intraoperatively, an unusual finding was a highly avascular nasal mucosa. COVID-19 may predispose a patient to infection by bacteria not known to be found in the orbit like Peptonifilus indulicus, which is present in vagina and stomach. The avascularity was most likely because of thromboembolic complications of COVID-19. Mucormycosis is a rhinal orbital infection with mucoralis species of fungus, uh, which is dreaded condition with a mortality rate of for approximately 50% even with treatment. It's an infection with invasion of the blood vessels by fungal hypha infraction and necrosis of host tissue. And there was a case of this disease which developed late as 30 to 42 days after the diagnosis of COVID-19. And the factors predisposing to this disease are uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, neuro, uh, neutropenia, elevated free iron levels, uh, deferoxamine, hematological malignancies, stem cell transplants, organ transplant patients on immunosuppressants. An early diagnosis is possible with histopathological and microbiological evidence. Appropriate management with antifungals and aggressive surgical debridement can improve survival. As a summary of the whole presentation, ophthalmic manifestations of COVID-19 uh, show the variety in terms of presentation, severity, and timing. Ophthalmic manifestations are more common in patients with severe systemic disease with abnormal blood and inflammatory parameters. The review of available literature suggests that there is very low risk of transmission through the ocular surface. The prevalence of ophthalmic manifestations among COVID-19 patients ranges from 2 to 32%. That was everything for now about COVID-19 and the eye. Thank you for watching. Stay positive but COVID negative. Till the next video. Bye.